this is lesson four volume prisms and cylinders and this can be found within the total surface area and volume topic learning goal for this one is to look into volume unit conversions and to look into the volume formulas of prisms oblique prisms and cylinders the success criteria for this one is to be able to calculate volumes of rectangular prisms solve problems involving volume of right angle prisms and to also solve problems involving volume for a range of prisms, cylinders, and composite solids. Before we look into the different examples for this one, uh, we want to make sure that we're pretty confident when it comes to conversion of now metric volume um, metric volume measurements so in other words we should be able to convert millimeters cubed to centimeters cubed to meters cubed to kilometers cubed and vice versa using the flow chart here um, so if I want to convert uh, centimeters cubed to meters cubed I would have to divide this by 100 to the power of 3 and remember 100 to the power of 3 is 100 times 100 times 100 um, and a little way of knowing what intuitively this means is say for instance I were to try to uh, I give you a question and we had to look into a cardboard box that's one meter by one meter by one meter and I said to you okay I propose this question do you remember those little uh, wooden blocks we used to have as a kid um, when you were in primary school and they were one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter? And the question I propose to you is, oh, how many of these one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter cubes can fit into a one meter by one meter by one meter box? Now you can make all these different assumptions of how much it can fit uh, that can fit in there. Um, but what you will need to do is, well, how about we convert meters cubed to centimeters cubed um, and that's all we need to do because that will tell us how many can fit in there and so all we have to do is just get this one meter and multiply it by 10 to the power of 3 uh, not 10 sorry 100 to the power of 3 so let's just do that let's just get 1 and multiply it by 100 to the power of 3 and this is a million and a lot of students when I when I give this question kind of get surprised They're like really a million a million of those can fit into a one meter box well yeah um, because remember you're lying quite a few flat down and that's just um, that's just a flat surface and then we're gonna keep going a hundred times all the way up so we're going a hundred length and a hundred width and a hundred height and that's why it's to the power of three. That's where that 100 times 100 times 100 initially comes from. Um, so this is a conversion you would use. Um, same thing with capacity to do with megaliters and uh, kiloliters, liters and milliliters. Uh, you either times or divide by a thousand depending on um, if you're going back or forth. And remember what one centimeter cube is the same as one milliliter. Now, I'm not going to do any examples for this one. Uh, what I'm more focused on is volume and the formulas for volume. So the, the major difference, major difference between total surface area and volume or just area and volume is that area, <clears throat> area looks into 2D shapes. Now, yes, when total surface area, we're dealing with 3D shapes, but we're trying to find the total surface area um, when laid or flat it will give us a 2D answer where volume has to do with three dimensions or in other words instead of trying to find how many squares can fit within a shape or total surface shape we're trying to find out how many cubes of that unit can fit into a larger 3D shape whether that be a prism an oblique prism which is a prism that's slanted um, or a right cylinder by right we mean non non oblique not slanted just straight 90 degree cylinder with a circular base from the top and the bottom and we're just trying to find out how many smaller cubes within that unit some millimeters centimeters can fit into the bigger one 
And the formulas are as follows. All you need to do is to get <clears throat> um, the volume of a rectangular prism. You find the area of the face or the base, which is this one here. And you multiply this by its height. So this here is the area, 2D area, and we just multiply it by its perpendicular height. Um, so A times H, but remember A, this area is just length times width. So this is where that length times width comes from. And you're just multiplying it with its height. With an oblique square prism, remember you can get oblique square prisms, rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, it doesn't necessarily matter. As long as you can find the base area of whatever the shape is you just multiply it again not with the slant when it's oblique it's still with the height and it's always a perpendicular height it's always a 90 degree height of this so just be very careful that sometimes some questions might give you the slant and give you the height um, always make sure you use a height from top to bottom and again for this case this is going to be l squared the length squared or in this case x squared times the height you give me what the base is and find that area out and then just multiply the height and that will give you the volume so it doesn't necessarily have to be x squared this is just to do with squares if it's triangular if it's triangular and you will see this within the example if it's a triangular one uh, the area of a triangle is half times base times height small height and you're just going to multiply this by whatever the height of that um, prism is so there are two H's, maybe I'll call this H1 and H2. Um, but again, this is just the, the base of it and you're just multiplying it by the height. Same thing with the cylinder. Give me the area of whatever the base is. In this case, this is the circle, pi r squared. And then again, multiply it by its height. Anything to do with volume, you're always trying to find the base area and then just multiplying it by its height. Let's look at let's look at two different uh, easy examples here. Let's look at the volume of these sol uh, these two solids, rounding to do sensible places with this one because it has a pi involved. So the volume is just the length times width and then times the height. Remember, this here is the base area, which if we were to draw these lines here, it's just this two by three, and then we're just multiplying it by the four. So two times three times four. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 4 is 24. Now, when you answer this in volume, it's 24 cubed meters. And that's what that little 3 indicates, that we're dealing with a 3D shape. So that just means, for maybe a cardboard box that's 2 meters uh, this way, 3 meters uh, wide, and 4 meters high, it's very, very big. It's maybe it's like an industrial size fridge box of some sort. Uh, the question is, or well, how many square meters, uh, uh, how many square cubes rather, can fit within this large box? And this here is 24. Um, and if we were to split this up, two here, like that, and then three across, one, two, three, two across here, like that. That was terrible. Let's try that again. Here we go. And we've got four high. It goes maybe one two now maybe this is not to the correct perspective but this is just showing you how we get these cubes and how many there are um, and there are six cubes within this flat area so there'll be six 12 18 24 all that and that's where that 24 comes from okay um with this one we're just trying to find the area of the base remember the base is the same as the top and the bottom it's consistently um, if it's consistent throughout the perpendicular height. So all we're doing to get the volume is getting the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, and just multiplying it by its perpendicular height. And I say, whenever I say perpendicular, I just mean the 90 degree height, the 90 degree height. So pi times our radius, which is two, so two squared, multiplied by the height, which is six. And all it takes to do that is just putting it into the calculator. Pi times two squared times six. SD 75 point, now it says two decimal places. So 75.39, that eight bumps that nine up, which as a consequence, 
resets to zero and bumps that three up to four. So this is 75.40. And whatever the unit is cubed remember it's cubed it is volume in other words this is just saying approximately nearly 75 and a half nearly 75 and a half um cubes that are one by one by one centimeters can fit within this area here within this volume here now we're just going to apply that last i'm sorry if you can hear my dog whining in the background uh, we're just going to apply that last um formula for the oblique one and this will wrap it up we're going to find the volume of this oblique area so we've got to find the area of this triangle and remember the area of a triangle is this base times height so a multiplied by its perpendicular h we know what the formula for a triangle is to get the area it's half times base times height and we're just going to multiply this by the perpendicular height and then this height here we'll call h1 and this height here we'll call h2 so the volume this one is equal to half times the base which is five centimeters times the first height within that triangle which is three i'll put that in brackets to indicate that that's where the um the base area came from and we're just going to multiply this by its height which is eight so to get the volume put this in brackets 1 over 2 times 5 times 3 close that bracket times and this will give us 60 cubed centimeters and that's all there is to it the volume uh, is quite a simple simple concept um, go ahead and check uh, the log sheet and see what questions you need to do and I'll see you in the next video bye bye